Hey troops, welcome back to the channel, Gen Day Commando. Thanks for stopping by. Um, today's video, I've held back from this video um, for about a week or so. I've been watching certain reactions. I've been watching, um, you know, d different articles, reading up on it a little bit, and uh, and just digesting the information first because it can be really, really easy to jump to conclusions with with this video, guys. And uh, you'll see it in a few seconds. It's titled. Royal Marines forced US Marines to surrender in exercise after eliminating almost the entire unit. That in itself is quite a provocative um, title for a for a military video, okay? Especially when it's Marine on Marine, okay? And especially when it's Britain versus the United States. As you guys know, I'm a former Royal Marines commando and um, I've worked closely with the US Marines. So I've seen um, full well just how well both sides can work together both sides can work individually um and and yeah i've got a lot of positives to say and a lot of negatives to say about both guys but hopefully i can give an alternate viewpoint on the whole scenario because not everything is as it seems in the uh, in the video but let's do this reaction and um let's let's stir up a bit of de uh, debate i think you're going to be shocked as what i've got to say to be honest with you let's get in Marines dominated United States forces during a training exercise in California, using a new battle structure. Royal Marines are taking on their comrades from the United States Marine Corps in the wilds of the Californian desert as they prepare for operations as part of a new task group. A new high readiness force, Littoral Response Group South, is to be built around Taunton-based 4-0 Commando and will focus on the regions east of the Suez Canal, ready to... Okay, so to start this off... I'm not just talking from um, being a Royal Marine. I'm talking from experience of actually doing this very um, this very exercise. Okay, it was the first thing I ever did in the Marines um, after passing the commando course and becoming a Royal Marines commando. And I've watched some of the videos of people, oh, the, especially the U.S. Marines, saying that 29 Palms Mojave is a shit all horrible area to train in. Blah 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 blah. Um, just to give uh, my perspective on it in comparison to what we have. The Mojave Desert is an absolute gift. It's a joy to work in, and we love it over there. The majority, the vast majority of Royal Marines absolutely love training there because in comparison to the shitholes where we train, Dartmoor and all of these horrendous places, Scotland, this is a gift. This is a gift. You just have to manage your, the, the heat pretty um, pretty well. But, you know, if you drink water and stuff like that, and uh, you're fit, and your fitness is where it needs to be, You'll have no problems whatsoever. This place for me was a gift. I learned so many good things there. I really, really enjoyed it. I would go back in a in a, in a heartbeat, guys. Now, the part where the Royal Marines are restructuring, doing this, doing that, it's it's all a week. I've heard it all before, guys. When I was in, we were restructuring to do this and that. And we might have different titles for different groups, and we might do um, it would do things orientated around that title a little bit more, but fundamentally pretty much 40 commando, 4-2 commando, 4-5 commando, go to the Mojave Desert every single year, all right? We rotate through that, and we do the same shit. It's as simple as that. Um, nothing has changed, par the titles. As far as concerned, when we're working with the US Marines, I think we need to remember, before we get into this video, Royal Marines commandos are specialist amphibious light infantry soldiers, an elite part of the British military, not a bog standard port, not a standard uh, entity. There's plenty of them in the United Kingdom. The Royal Marines aren't one. That's not me saying it to be biased. That's a fact. Now, the vast majority of US Marines are, as I would say, standard. Okay, you've got your US recons and your raiders and stuff. These people are the specialists. These people are the hardcore infantiers of the US Marines. These are the guys that you can compare to the Royal Marines commandos because they do the same type of stuff, the same type of specialized um, specialist skill sets. So from the very start, I think this is biased to the Royal Marines because we're not comparing fairly. It's as simple as that. To respond to global events.
To ensure the commando element of the group are ready for deployment next year, the Marines must first complete Exercise Green Dagger in the Mojave Desert alongside the United States and Netherlands Marine Corps. The exercises across sun-scorched deserts will test the Marines in a number of warfighting skills and their ability to work effectively with their Dutch counterparts who also form part of the Littoral Response Group. The conclusion of the exercises, known as Green Dagger, was five days of grueling warfighting which saw Allied forces, from the United States, Canada, United Arab Emirates, the Netherlands and United Kingdom, join forces to take on a highly equipped United States Marine Corps adversary. Green Dagger will culminate in a free play battle, in which Dutch and British Marines will work together against the might of the United States Marine Corps to evaluate the effectiveness of each of the Allied forces. The ex and this is another thing, it's the terminology. It's not to evaluate that. We would think it is, it would be told that we are. What's, what's there to evaluate is things higher up the chain. Does it work? Can we simulate X, Y, and Z? And I say simulate for a reason. It's simulating it. Yes, it's live rounds and ammunitions and stuff like this, but effectively, I think these, these battle scenarios are prepped um, in such a way that the outcome is predictable. Um, just like it was when I did it, the outcome was quite predictable. You can predict what the outcome was going to be because it was a battle scenario, all right? Um, so it's it's easy to say we forced them to surrender. You know, yes, in certain parts of it, I guarantee we'll have if had the ability to do so, and obviously we did so, but you've got to look at the bigger picture. Is this um, a battle scenario? Yeah, is it a battle scenario? Maybe the US Marines were forced to surrender because that was part of the battle plan for them to practice certain elements of their military. Maybe they were getting more out of it than we actually were, all right? The practice is in losing sometimes and not winning, as they say. But again, guys, like I said, I'm coming here from um, a different direction to what most people have been talking about. Maybe it's not the type of opinion you want to hear, but I'm just here to play devil's advocate. Exercises are taking place at the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center at 29 Palms, which covers an area similar in size to Luxembourg in the Californian deserts. Royal Marines have put the seal on desert exercises with an intensive five-day battle in California alongside allies across one of the largest military training areas in the world. Commandos have spent the last two months in the Mojave Desert preparing for deployments next year as part of the newly formed Littoral Response Group, which is one of two new Royal Navy task groups centered on commando forces set up to respond to world events. Under reforms directed by the First Sea Lord, Admiral Sir Tony Radican, Royal Marines commando forces are to become more flexible and mobile fighting troops. To become more flexible fighting troops, I think we've been nothing but flexible for since the conception um, of the modern day commandos in World War II. Um, we've been nothing but flexible in comparison to the wider British military. That's all we are is flexible. So, um, yeah, that's just stating the obvious there. To be more flexible, I hear the same stuff. That's what I was hearing when I was in. We need to be more flexible. We need to be more this and that. Yeah. Experts from across three commando brigade came together to form the Littoral Response Group, with Taunton-based 4-0 Commando at its heart at the vast United States Marine Corps training facility at 29 Palms in California. The exercise focused around three urban sprawls which were defended by Allied forces, the largest of which consisting of 1,200 buildings purpose-built for militaries to test themselves among. The regiment has formed combat service support troops that deploy at range and are isolated from direct chain of command working independently to keep supplies of food and ammunition flowing. The troops have been established to allow Commando Logistic Regiment to be in more places at once, while also continuing to make use of the Armoured Support Troop, which provides force protection and moves Marines around the battlefield. Additionally, Commando Logistic Regiment are also continuing to develop their 3D printing capability which helps provide battle damage repair options on the front line. Wow, that is cool. The Littoral Response Group won decisive... Wow. So... That's cool. I didn't even know that such a thing existed. 3D printing capability to repair items on the field. That would be very, very handy. I'm not sure how widespread that could go in terms of its abilities. Um, will that cross over into, for instance, a pin, a firing pin from a rifle? 
um, which has to be very strong and robust, I don't know. ...battles early on and gained ground from their enemy, but, with the United States Marines pushing into Allied territory, Royal Marines and their allies carried out raids behind enemy lines to stop further counterattacks. Our success has proved the new commando force concept is more lethal and sophisticated than ever before and I am immensely proud of every member of the Littoral Response Group and their vital contributions, said Lieutenant Colonel Andy Dow, commanding officer of 4-0 Commando. Operating alongside our partners from the United States, Netherlands, Canada and the United Arab Emirates gives us a fantastic opportunity to test, integrate and continue to push our capabilities in new and innovative directions. Throughout this deployment our focus has been on integrating game-changing capabilities from across the commando force to deliver disproportional effect in the face of a free-thinking peer adversary. The exercise concluded with a last-minute enemy assault which was repelled, leaving Allied forces in control of over two-thirds of the entire battlefield. The commandos took advantage of one of the best military training areas in the world to experiment with new tactics and share knowledge with allies. So it's the way this video has kind of explained things is that oh it's a, it's a new thing for us to be there. It's not Royal Marines have been going to the Mojave Desert um, every year for a long, long time doing the same stuff. They call it a different name every other five or ten years or so, but it's the same stuff, guys. We're quite acquainted with that area, not as much as U.S. Marines, but when we go there, we're very, very busy for two months. We get a lot of time on the ranges there, so... Um, you know, you know, I haven't, I haven't been there for coming up to like eight year or so, um, and and I can still remember it. It was that much of a, a busy time in my life. Um, so we're we're quite a, quite well adapted to that area. It's um almost like a bit of a second home for the Royal Marines. So it's nothing new to us. Marine Sean McGrath from 4-0 Commando said, This is the first time I've been to the States and worked alongside the US and the Dutch. Seeing how they operate and how we can work together has been really rewarding. Mm. It's been fantastic to work in one of the best training environments in the world. I agree. It was the best training environment in the world for me. Um, used to working in shitholes and stuff like that. What they had in the desert there was fantastic. And I... I, I Truly believe it was, um, I learned how to become a Royal Marines Commando. I passed the course in training, but in the desert is where I truly honed those skills. And I was very, very confident um, on my own individual skills at the end of this. I was very, very confident indeed, guys. Um, and it was all through the, 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 the train facilities that we had there was second to none. And working alongside the US Marines, the Dutch Marines was a fantastic experience. It made me have immense confidence in the strength of our allied um, brotherhood. And it made me feel confident that the people left and right of me, whether they're wearing a British flag, a United States flag or a Dutch flag, doesn't really matter. We're all on the same um, wavelength, so to speak. But there is definitely a, um, a, a difference in um skill set from a, a a u.s marine complete and training and a royal marine complete and training the the end product is not just different in um in expertise but just different entirely it's uh i don't want to say less trained it's it's um but the royal marines commandos are, are highly trained and um i think the u.s marines can be as highly trained but they have to do a few extra things at the end of that which i think is also a good thing it allows the standards um to have more numbers of basic soldiers and then specialize thereafter into the nitty-gritty stuff if you want so it has to be that way you have a massive force a force that's arguably the same size if not bigger than the um than the united kingdom's military entirely so very different reasons that we have a more specialist individual at the end of train is simply because there's not as many of us at all. All right, it's like what between four and eight thousand of us at any given time. So that's not a big number, guys. The Dutch Marines that I worked with, um, I can't say too much on their skill set. They were very, they, they were very good. They they were no different or too much to us. And the U.S. Marines, different isms, had longer hair, but uh, yeah, uh, nothing nothing too dissimilar really, guys.
So I would have liked to have seen the Royal Marines fighting against the more specialized US Marines. Then it would have been a fair um a, a, a fair fair judgment of what would actually happen in those true circumstances if that makes sense 29 palms is absolutely huge and offers pretty much every type of training possible we can train across terrains in cities and with so much capable kit i can see why we come here this deployment has ultimately readied the commando element of literal response group south for operations next year joining its sister task group literal response group north ready to react to unfolding events around the world. While on the periphery it would seem largely like the much more cumbersome and bulkier logistic task group of old, it is a much smaller, more agile and potent force and is designed to deliver a more tactically astute support, said Major Matt Williams, in command of the Landing Force Support Squadron and Logistic Task Group, of the Commando Logistic Regiment offering on Green Dagger. We have come a long way since starting this journey in earnest last year. We've seen the regiment deploy both combat service support troops and armoured support troop on two separate occasions, while also preparing for the forthcoming winter deployment in Norway and generating the first mm. troop aligned to the Littoral Response Group South early next year. The Littoral Response Group North has already deployed to the Baltic this year and has a focus on events across Europe, while Littoral Response Group South will operate east of the Suez Canal. The Littoral Response Group South is expected to be functional next year with the addition of amphibious ships and aircraft. It was a fantastic exercise guys, I remember doing it, all of that stuff, I loved every second of it. And the bit of leave in Vegas was even better. Some cool kit right there. Right here, let's have a chat about this then. So uh, again, I don't want to be like, oh, he's he's so negative about you know even the Royal Marines and this that and the other. It's easy for me to go, yeah, we kicked your asses, we did much better than you, we're better, blah 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 blah. I'm not going to say that. It's bloody obvious, all right. We're talking about Royal Marines commandos. If you know anything about the Royal Marines commandos. They, they are an elite amphibious infantry force. They're not a basic um, bog-standard British Army regiment. They, they've went through commando training. We've, we're, we're a specialised outfit, okay, of, of, of men. We're a core of specialists. Um, so that doesn't surprise me that we've, you know, kicked standard US Marines' asses. It's like if you put the Royal Marines up against its own Royal Marines mountain leaders. Standard Marines would get their asses kicked because the, the mountain leaders have went through a horrifically hard course that makes them, you know, the end product better. It's as simple as that. It's not as if it's a, oh, it's my dad's bigger than your dad. It's the, the end product is better. Um, and we're talking at the first part of the um, whole cycle in the career. So US Marines... They've they've got the same potential, the same abilities, but U U.S. Marines, it seems to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, at the end of training, you get put out to unit or wherever. You you, you can then specialize in different areas. That, that, that If you want to be, you know, the next Rambo, you can be. There's those courses out there if you meet the grid. Now, the the, the, the one main difference is at the end of commando training, you've, you've already done... Uh, a big part of that hard, arduous course that you and the US Marines would have a, a an ability to say no to, for instance. Whereas we've we went through it, so at the end, automatically, if you've made it, you've 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 already a really really good soldier, um, or a, or a better soldier at that point. Does that make sense? Um, I think it makes sense. 
but again it's it's me saying that humbly not slating anyone it's just the end product at the end of trend the very end and the very beginning of your career one has a higher output than the other in terms of how good they are um does it mean that you both can't um that doesn't mean that a u.s marine can't be better than a royal marine well look there's courses in the u.s marines that produce some of the best soldiers on the planet so and you've got more people than us so arguably you you know there's there's a different comparison there i think i think we should have really compared the royal marines fighting against more specialized variants of the u.s marines then it would have been a fair um simulation as far as I'm concerned. But let me know in the comments, guys, if you like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you think I'm talking crap, let me know as well. I'm uh, always up to debate.